Low key geek. Hey, hey, he's a low key geek. He tries to be out there when he wants to be, but hey, he's a low key. He's a low key geek. All right, sorry about that, guys. I just realized that my mic has been off the whole time. <laughs> so my whole entire intro was completely ruined. But anyway, um, busy week. Let, 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 me, let me just recap it real I'm going to rewind real, real quick here. Um, been a busy week. Hope you guys are keeping safe. Um, a lot of areas, in, whether you're in the U.S. or around the world, are slowly starting to reopen, or at least there are phases and discussions about reopening. Um, here in New York, uh, we're not quite there yet, at least in the city, uh, New York City proper. Uh, New York State, there are certain areas within the state that uh, have been given the green light to reopen uh, certain aspects of daily life. Um, I just want to make sure that wherever you are, whatever you guys are planning to do, you remain safe, you be smart about it, uh, take extra precautions or the necessary precautions, I should say. Um, you know, we just don't know where things are going to land out and head out. Um, you know, here in New York, we're going to hit 80 degree weather. So, and it's the first time and it's May. So I feel like it's a little early. Um, you know, it's a great day to be out and about. You know, I was out yesterday running some chores. The The sun was out. It was nice, but definitely had my mask on, had a little bottle of, uh, you know, sanitizer, hand sanitizer, and just, you know, taking some extra care and whatever it is that you guys do, I hope you do the same. Um, <clears throat> but what I was, what I was about to allude to um, before realizing that my mic was off, um, that when this whole pandemic started and it was a little different scenario with me um as i explained in my very first podcast um you know i've been pretty much working from home or been at home uh for about over two months now so uh, probably much longer than most of you um but you know facebook has always been like an interesting place to uh kind of see what your friends are up to what your friends are friends and peers are kind of finding interesting or hilarious what they're trying to share with the groups and all that stuff like that and when the pandemic started i thought it was like a cute uh, place to kind of see okay how are your friends and other people you know handling their situations um, i think it's safe to say that a lot of us are either going to be amazing chefs for at least um, the the near future or the time being, a lot of us have uh, discovered uh, baking for the first time. A lot of people are really proud in their sourdough breads and all that. So I hope they've turned out great, and maybe one day I'll get to try some of them. Um, or a lot of you have kind of embraced your inner alcoholic personality and just started drinking relentlessly, or whatever the case is. Um, you know, and a lot of people had a lot of plans to kind of, I'm going to teach myself this and I'm going to be able to uh, organize my home or, you know, start a new hobby or whatever it is. And it's interesting to see how all of you were there at that time and where a lot of you are now. And, you know, I'm a pretty private person for the most part. You know, I do keep my friends very close by and close to heart um, and I don't really expand so vastly outside of my circle um, so the people that I'm friends with on Facebook I'm truly friends with and I'm very close with them um, and after these last couple of months um, all I can say is that there are a lot of you that I love still love very dearly and deeply but there are a few of you that I am actually very happy not to be stuck with during this time in this situation because let's just say some of you can handle these situations a lot better than most um, but there are some that are just not meant for um, these kind of situations and it's it's interesting to kind of see the deterioration um, of the the men mental state and uh, anxiety and all that um look 
I'm here for you guys. I know it's not easy. There are days that I find like I'm going nuts and all that. I just choose not to air it out on Facebook. Um, but uh, but another observation I had too is that Facebook really used this opportunity to kind of, in their minds, try to target you with a lot of interesting and uh, what I like to say, trying to be funny content and video. Um, I don't know if your Facebook feeds are like mine, but there have I am very very um, done with the whole Bushman prank. Um, you know, scaring people in the street, pretending you're a bush, you know, was funny at first, but now I'm a little tired of it. Um, the college guy attempting to pick up girls by offering them money um, was interesting in the beginning. Now, not so much. Um, you know, the whole gold digger series or whatever the case or whatever they want to call it. A lot of cute dog videos, a lot of cute animal videos, but I think I'm at the point where it's like up to here already. Um, so, um, I'm going to be limiting my Facebook, uh, exposure, uh, for the time being. Um, but definitely, um, you know, if, if it's a means for you to relax, um, kind of get your mind off of things, then more power to you. Um, but uh, I'm sure you'll be hearing a lot more of those type of observations from me, uh, as we move forward. That being said, you know, some interesting stuff um, hit this week, news-wise. Uh, first, I kind of want to start off with um, some things that I found out um, or I read about um, from more of the Japanese culture um, um, point um, side of things. Um, so one thing that kind of hit the, the news reel or the, the outlets is that um, if you're a fan of anime and if you're a fan of uh, really good anime, um, then you're pretty familiar with Studio, uh, Studio Ghibli. Um, and what they have done is uh, one of the artists of uh, Studio Ghibli has um, released kind of like a how-to video, um, a cute little how-to video on um, how to draw um, the Ghibli way. Um, I'm sure you've seen series like this from um, places like, uh, you know, Disney and, and other certain outlets. But uh, I thought this was extremely cute where um, one of the, the main artists over there uh, has decided to do kind of like a little nice, like, you know, tutorial on how to go about in um, kind of drawing, you know, uh, Totoro, one of the more famous characters uh, in the Ghibli universe. So definitely, if you have the time and if you are looking for something interesting to kind of do with your kids, then this is something and will be like an interesting exercise for you to to do uh, as a group together. Um, you know, I, I've seen a lot of you are kind of... Um, you know, doing a lot of family activities. Um, you know, if you're a single parent, um, you're trying to do stuff with your with your children, whether it's like cooking or, or putting puzzles together or playing board games and things like that. I think this will be something interesting to, to kind of expose them to, especially if they're a fan of animation. Um, and if they've already been exposed to Japanese animation, um, I think Totoro is one of the characters that have been um exposed to children at a very early age um because because of the storyline and how cute and sweet the storyline is and it's very easy to digest for children so um i think that's something interesting for you guys to check out um so i will be as i do with every show um i will provide links um to some of the topics that i talk about for you guys to check out later um and before i go i move on uh again just a reminder um you know, I have my set schedule of things that I want to discuss, but if at any time you want to you know, interrupt my flow and talk about a different topic, or if you have a question that you really want me to address immediately, uh, please go to the URL above. Uh, for as little as a dollar, you can go ahead and shoot over a message. It will pop up on the screen and I will get a chance to see it and I will address it right away um, so that 
you know, uh, whatever topic you would like to hear me talk about, I will do so um, at that moment. And of course, obviously, if you're watching live, hit that follow and uh, like and subscribe buttons. Um, you know, it helps with the algorithm methods of these services and it helps me out tremendously. If you're watching on the replay on YouTube, please hit that like button. I know it's very easy. I do it too, where I just watch a video, even though I'm enjoying it, I don't do anything. Uh, but hitting that like button does really help the algorithms and, uh, and do subscribe. So moving forward, um, a couple of Japanese artists have gone ahead and um, released additional activities for you to do at home during this time. Um, one of which is uh, Yoshito Monada. Um, if you're familiar with Japanese art and then pop culture art or, um, you know, kind of like that type of art, um, a very well known artist in the in the world in the, this type of realm. So he teamed up with Japan Society, um, as he does uh, occasionally. Um, last year, he had a special exhibit that um, that he hosted at Japan Society. And if you don't know who J what Japan Society is, it's a cultural institution here in New York City um, that kind of showcases Japanese culture, art, um, you know, music, performances, uh, movies. Um, it's a place I go to frequently. Um, I don't know if I'll have a chance to go back there this year, but um, he teamed up with them to kind of create this nice little downloadable uh, piece of art that you can color at home. Um, again, another great activity for you and your kids to do, um, or just you in general, you know, as an adult, there's nothing wrong with uh, coloring and indulging in your art so i think this is something that will be fun to do for a most beloved character that he has you know drawn over and over again and another artist in the same within the same vein uh takashi murakami again very popular artist especially amongst the hip-hop world um he's done cover work for uh kanye west and and other artists um huge collaborator in um pop culture and this time he's teamed up with jay uh, balvin um for um an initiative called families belong together um and here he has provided another great uh downloaded uh downloadable uh piece of work that you could take home with you and color uh, or in design and customize any which way you like uh again like either by yourself or with your kids or with your family i think this is something that will be extremely fun and um ni a nice way to kill time um especially for the upcoming weekend or weekends since it doesn't look like schools will be reopening anytime soon especially since it is already mid-may most most schools are already uh at this time um heading into uh, graduations and all that and moving on off of this current semester so definitely check this out um, links will come um, once uh, the show is over so uh, moving on um, something else interesting coming out of Japan um, some interesting news so uh, again sticking and going back to Ghibli um, how Miyazaki um, as if you follow his career and if you've been following the Ghibli universe, you know that um, at one point he, he announced his retirement, that he was no longer going to be producing new movies and new animation. But he has come out of retirement and it was announced that Studio Ghibli was working on two new features. Um, release dates are to be determined, but one of them is actually Hayao Miyazaki's kind of out of retirement um, new piece of work called Kimitachi wa do ikiruka, or in English they say it's um, translated to how do you live? Um, the interesting thing about this uh, movie, and it's very typical in uh, Miyazaki's way, is that he's continuing the original um, uh, art form of hand drawing his, his, his uh, movies and animation. And because of it being hand drawn, and unfortunately because of the current pandemic and problem that we find ourselves in now, only 36 minutes of the movie has been done so far. And they've been working on this, I believe, since last year. Um, according to some of the animators and people over there at Studio Ghibli, um, 
it's an exciting time for them and they enjoy working on it. Um, but unfortunately, it doesn't look like the movie will be done and completed until three years from now. Um, that's just how long it's going to take because of the hand-drawn process and I think because of the stoppage and blocks because of the current pandemic. So um, again, no, no real details have been released. Um, at least from what I could see, and it'll be interesting to see what they could uh, put together for this new uh, piece of work from Miyazaki. So stay tuned. I'm sure more will be released um, as you know the the years go by. Uh, we have a long time to wait for for this to come along. Um, so stay tuned. Now, um, something else to stick within the Ghibli chain uh, train. Uh, a lot of Ghibli news this morning. Um, nothing wrong with that. Uh, most times, uh, Studio Ghibli is very silent and quiet. Nothing much to report there. But um, if you've had the chance, um, like I have, um, you know, I've mentioned before that I consider Japan to be my second home. I've been there more than 10 times. And one of my earliest memories, memories of visiting Japan is visiting the, the Ghibli Museum. Um, if you're familiar or not, um, Studio Ghibli put together a small little museum in the city of uh, Mitaka in, uh, in Tokyo. And basically, it celebrates all of the Ghibli works of art and animation form where you kind of get to see, you know, kind of... Um, um, sample setups of like their studios or animation studios you have it's a very fantastical environment akin to like how Disneyland would be if they were to treat uh, Ghibli in a certain way um, you have a lot of interactive environments you have a lovely garden um, outside where at the top of the museum you get to see a statue of the infamous robot from uh, I believe it's Laputa um, so you get to have it's a great photo opportunity um you have a great little cafe and you can even well I, they don't really allow adults to do it but for your kids they are allowed to sit and play inside an actual giant cat bus uh like you see in uh, my neighbor is uh, to totoro so you know if this was something that you already knew of and you wanted to visit or if you had plans to visit japan this year and this was on your bucket list um, tickets for the museum as of recent have been very hard to come by. Um, they had a resurgence of interest, especially from tourists. Um, but it doesn't look like a lot of people are going to get to visit there this year. Um, obviously, they're, they're closed for now. Don't know if they'll be able to reopen this year or not. But what they have done, and this is reported by uh, the Travel and Leisure website, is that they have... Uh, put together kind of like a virtual museum, a virtual tour of their museum. Um, something that is, uh, that you could, from the safety of your own home, kind of enjoy the the sights and sounds of the Ghibli Museum. So um, take it from me as someone who's been there twice. Um, it is very captivating. It is very cute. And if you're a fan of any of the Ghibli movies, um, you will find something there that you will find interesting and fascinating. So um, if you have the chance, I, I highly suggest that you sit down and you know, kind of take this virtual tour and enjoy um, the sights and sound of the, the Ghibli Museum because it is definitely worth worth uh, taking a look at. Um, and hopefully this can kind of help gear you towards planning a potential trip in the future so um again link to come um after the show um so moving on to some news that is outside of japan this time um some unfortunate news coming out of broadway um again i do live in new york so i do like to talk about things that happen locally around me um you know, and because this is pandemic, um, what a, and if you've been to New York or you currently live in New York, you know, one of our biggest tourist driving um, events and occasions is Broadway. And people love coming to watch their Broadway shows. Um, you know, Broadway ha was seeing a pretty good year last year, obviously because of hits like Hamilton, um, you know, and uh, other other kind of huge, huge um uh, shows like Book of Mormon and, you know, Wicked is still um, alive and kicking. 
But unfortunately, um, Broadway has seen its first victim uh, because of this pandemic. And Disney's Frozen, the musical that opened last year, is uh, reportedly the first Broadway show that will be shutting down for good because of the pandemic. Um, unfortunately, due to the uh, losses in revenue and ticket sales and attendance, uh, they cannot foresee them uh, themselves um holding on and hoping for a reopening in the near future so they have decided to permanently close up shop uh, and that's unfortunate because if you're familiar with broadway production there's a lot of people who are involved in putting these shows together um it's not just the talent that you see on stage but a lot of the backstage talent you know set designers set operators stage managers musicians for the music um so a lot of these people even though they have been currently unemployed, look like they are fully unemployed and don't have a current um, job to go back to. So I'm pretty sure, well, I'm hoping that a lot of them uh, can find a new work moving forward, but it is kind of an unfortunate time for, for them to hear that, um, this, this terrible news. So um, it reminds me of a story since I did used to work in the city, um, you know, I take a lot of breaks and I would walk around and I remember bumping into this one lady who was extremely frantic. You know, she was holding a bunch of papers in her hand, talking on the phone, drinking her coffee. And then she decided to like kind of put her coffee down, put her papers down because she had to like finish up this call. And, you know, you could tell her mind was all scrambled. Uh, and then she just started walking again, li leaving all of her papers uh, on the floor. And I had to call her out and, you know, say, hey, ma'am, uh, don't forget your papers and all that. And she was like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. Um, by the way, if you ever happen to watch Frozen, I am currently on my way to an audition to be the backup to uh, for the lead. I was like, oh my god, that's awesome. I, I wish you the best of luck and all that stuff. Uh, I haven't seen Frozen. I don't know if she ever make it. But those are just some of the stories that you could find yourself in um, in re retelling when you live in when you work and live in the city. So um, unfortunate news there. So hopefully um, a lot of the people involved with the production can find something new moving forward. Um, moving into some gaming news, uh, more gaming news. Um, you know, if you watch the, the podcast I do with Paul from Paul Programs on Wednesday, we, you know, dive deep into a lot of the major news that happened earlier in the week and the end of last week. But since then, there's been some additional amazing news. Uh, one of which is yesterday, uh, Sony... Uh, released gameplay footage of their upcoming title, Ghost of Tsushima. Um, this was something that uh, I think some of us were expecting to come sometime soon, but we didn't expect it to come out this week. Um, and it just so it looks like Sony is really on a hot streak right now, you know, after their um, work with Epic Games in releasing first-time footage of the Unreal 5 engine uh, and how it looks like coming out of the new PlayStation 5 platform, now we get to see footage of this uh, anticipated upcoming title. And I just watched it for the first time right before I went live today. And I have to tell you, it looks gorgeous. It's, it's an amazing looking game, very cinematic, um, especially if you are a fan of the old samurai ninja, um, the old like uh, Japanese black and white movies um, that were made fo uh, popular by um, a lot of famous actors and directors. It, it definitely has a callback to that feel. And the landscapes and the graphics are very seamless, very beautiful to look at. I could imagine how it would look like in full-blown 4K uh, for those of you who have the means to play it and look at it that way. <clears throat> they even covered you know, the interactions of the characters, how it's an open world environment. So you can interact with a lot of, um, you know, the landscape and even interact with um, animals that you come across. Um, the The fighting mechanics looks very intense and very, very amazing. Um, it's kind of a stealthy game. So a lot of it really 
um, depends on how stealthy you can be, how you can get in and out of cities and towns um, and accomplish the, the missions and goals that you have set for yourself. Um, it, it just looks like you're watching a movie, which is fantastic. And they even know that and they play to that fact because they allow for various modes um, like photo mode and cinematic mode, which allows you to turn the game black and white and really live some of your um, your combat and uh, action scenes in a black and white cinematic way. So again, like if you are a fan of like the Kurosawa movies of the past, this definitely has a huge callback to that. So it's very amazing. I mean, actually, I wasn't looking forward to this because I think I was let down by a lot of similar type games that have come out in the past. But this looks like it might uh, pique my interest a bit. I'm just not a huge fan of the open world type of games these days. Um, I kind of more I'm more in tune with your rail type, get me from A to B type of games. Like I kind of want to be led through a specific storyline and not have to explore out and do all these little side missions and all these little things. Um, so not really a huge fan of that, but uh, this game might intrigue me enough to kind of at least test it out. Um, if I have the option to kind of uh, stick to a, an A to B storyline, then I'm going to go ahead and definitely probably do that. So um, definitely something worth, check, uh, worth checking out. And if you have a chance and you haven't seen the, the footage yet, it's online and linked to come. Um, definitely worth checking out. And then in surprise news that I don't think any of us was expecting, Paper Mario is back. Uh, and that brought a huge smile to my face when it was announced Wednesday morning. Um, I was completely shocked. And, um, you know, I wasn't really expecting to see anything new coming out. Um, not Wednesday morning, yesterday morning. So yesterday was a, definitely a, a big day uh, for game news. But Paper Mario is one of those series that I really really loved and in, and I really endear mostly because it was very different to um, when you compared it to all the other Mario games um, when it first came out back in 2000 for the Nintendo 64 um, it was one of those refreshing games that kind of refreshed the the genre for for myself where it had a lot of rpg elements in there and it wasn't like your typical platformer which the mario games are always typically known for um you know super mario rpg came out and that kind of changed things around um, but when paper mario came out not only was the gameplay new and refreshing but just the look of it was extremely adorable and cute and very, very unique, too, because I've never seen a game take advantage of like the flat 2D um, paper like animation like this series has. And it, it really drew my attention. Um, the series has seen its release of, on pretty much all the major Nintendo platforms, whether it was GameCube, Wii or Wii U. So this will be their first uh, release for the current platform, the Nintendo Switch, and I'm definitely 100% looking forward to it. This is a game I'm definitely 100% going to be playing. Um, and I might even go back to some of the past games, because there there are some of the games that I've um, you know played in the past that I didn't really get a chance to play so much of. So, you know, I'm, I'm definitely going to look forward to kind of revisit the series as a whole. Um, but in not only was it a huge surprise that they're working on or they were working on this game, but the next surprise that kind of hit is that it's going to be coming out in July already. So we, we are only just shy two months of experiencing the new um, addition to the Paper Mario world. So I'm, I'm, I'm so excited. I can't wait and definitely looking forward to see what they're going to be able to put together for us there. So um, I'm sure a lot more to come as the months um, go by and the release date gets closer, but definitely something that I'm going to keep keeping my eye on. Um, and again, if you cannot tell, I'm super excited for this game. Um, definitely one of my favorite series uh, out there. Um, so just in some smaller uh, game news here, um, 
this came out earlier in the week and I, I didn't really have a chance to talk about it except on Twitter. Um, I have been playing or I have played Predator Hunting Grounds on PlayStation. Um, I had fun with it for that time I played. Uh, I've always been wanting to go back because it's been some time since I've been back. Um, but it, it's interesting that they announced that uh, the famous character of Dutch who was played and portrayed by Arnold Schwarzenegger in the original movie is coming back. Um, they're releasing uh, downloadable content on May 26th where they're going to add a storyline of Dutch within the game. Um, it's not clear and it doesn't look like you could play him as a character just as of yet. Uh, but Arnold did record some new uh, dialogue that within the game you're going to be hearing tapes uh, of him speaking and kind of recapping what he's been up to this whole time in the Predator universe. So um, I'm hoping that they can add him as a playable character in the future um, or at least be able to play alongside of his character. I don't know how they're going to do it, but it's exciting if you're a fan of Predator um, and a fan of this game. Uh, I, for one, uh, appreciate the game for what it is. Um, so I am looking forward to that. And if you are a Switch owner and you do have access to the Nintendo, the NES and the SNES, um, you know, virtual consoles, um, they announced that next week, um, I believe on May 20th, they are releasing some new titles for each, each um, virtual console a platform. So for Super Nintendo, they're going to be releasing Operation Logic Bomb, Panel de Pond and Wild Guns. Um, and for the NES, they are releasing Rygar. Um, so for Rygar, I remember that game. I used to own that game. Uh, that was a really, really fun um, action platformer game uh, akin to like Ninja Gaiden a little bit, um, but not as extremely difficult and frustrating. Um, you know, and then for the Super Nintendo, Wild Guns. Wild Guns is a great arcade shooter, um, which is really fun. You get to play your your uh, cowboy and um, you know West like um, you know characters and scenarios. And uh, it was something I remember playing in the arcades um, also, and it was a lot of fun. So definitely check it out if you are a fan of the retro games and if you're a fan of uh, heading backwards uh, and playing through the the virtual console. Um, also, uh, I don't know if you guys uh, know of or have seen uh, this YouTube series called The Gaming Historian. Um, I've been watching his videos and following him for a good amount of time now. Um, he is a great... He puts together these great videos that kind of get, goes back and tells the history of a certain game or history of a certain time within gaming. Um, and it's definitely like a great watch. He's done some great episodes where he looked into, you know, how Mario was, was you know, created and put together the Legend of Zelda series. Um, some of the more controversies around gaming. Um, so the, he released a new video, um, I believe, over the last weekend. Um, where he goes into uh, Sega's kind of um, answer to Zelda um, when it, um, in the game called Crusader of Senti. Now, it went under a, a different name in Japan, but basically this was their answer for the Genesis on creating kind of more an action RPG platformer to compete with the likes of Zelda. And I vaguely remember this game back in the day, but then watching and hearing the story behind it um, really, really uh, intrigued me. And um, I didn't know it was one of those limited release games. That That's one of the reasons why a lot of people don't really know about it. Um, I did a brief search on eBay to see how much a game like that would cost. Brand new unopened a game like that will run you almost eight hundred dollars unopened i mean uh opened with everything included it'll run you like around three and just a cartridge alone will already clock over a hundred dollars so it's one of those like collectible rare games out there but with emulators and things of that nature i'm sure there's ways to uh find it and try it out i might do so i don't know yet but it looked very interesting and it looks pretty 
pretty for a Genesis game, um, especially a Genesis game of that type. So I may be looking forward to checking that out. But do check out that uh, episode and check out the series um, if you have the chance, because there's a lot of good content there for, for you to to check out and relive your 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 history and, and memories of uh, video games in the past. So. Moving off of give video game news, some more of like entertainment news um, and all that. Um, the big news that kind of like started cracking on Monday and kind of lingered throughout the week is uh, Mandalorian news about this casting of Katie Sackhoff to reprise her role as Bo-Katan in season two of The Mandalorian. Um, as of what I know today, both Lucasfilm and Disney still hasn't confirmed anything. Even Katie herself, I believe, still has no confirmation about it at all. But it looks like this is something that is truly happening. And like I said before, um, you know, it just looks like season two of The Mandalorian is going to be a reunion of uh, the Clone Wars and Rebels. So, uh, but in live action form. And I think that would be an interesting thing to kind of see how they're going to how that's going to play out. You know, the Boba Fett or not Boba Fett rumors or, you know, is Rex going to be in it um, is interesting to kind of see how that plays out. So definitely check out um, that news and we'll see what happens when season two of Mandalorian comes out later this year. Mm. But one thing I will say is that it is definitely worth checking out this new series that they have on Disney Plus called uh, Disney Gallery. Right now, they have uh, two episodes, and the third episode is supposed to drop, I think, today. Um, it kind of goes behind the scenes of The Mandalorian. Um, I did catch, I did watch um, episodes one and two. Episode one is really focused on the directors of all the episodes. So you had Taika Waititi there, you know, uh, Rick Fubioma, um, uh, Deborah Chow talking about their directing of the episodes. And then See, episode two talks more about the production and kind of more of the storytelling of of the series. So um, very interesting glimpse um, behind the scenes of The Mandalorian. So it's worth watching if you have Disney Plus. So and it kind of holds you over until season two comes out. So something good to to catch. Um, next bit of things that I found interesting is um, again uh, to kind of help you figure out what you could do at home while you're keeping yourself safe um, YouTube um, kind of um, will be releasing or as of yesterday re uh, is releasing Princess Purple Rain concert uh, for three days only you get to see the full concert from start to finish this was a very iconic and very famous uh, concert that he put together to celebrate uh, his album Purple Rain. A lot of clips that you've seen of Prince performing live was taken from was taken from this concert. Um, so um, you have until uh, I believe end of day Saturday to kind of catch the full concert uh, for free on YouTube. So if you're a fan of Prince, uh, if you don't know who Prince is, um, you should find out because he is definitely an icon when it comes to rock and pop um, of the past. Um, great musician, great singer. Um, I'm sure uh, you've heard his songs or even sung his song during any one of your karaoke nights. So definitely do check it out. I think I'm going to check it out this weekend. It should be fun to, to, to watch. Um, in other entertainment news, um, Bill Murray did kind of a, an online um, interview with Ellen DeGeneres for Ellen DeGeneres' show. Uh, I guess she's doing an online version of her show now. And you know, she had Bill Murray on, and Bill Murray did talk about the new Ghostbusters movie coming out um, next year now. Uh, it was pushed back from this year. Um, and he kind of talked about how much he really, really missed Harold Ramis, uh, Ramis um, who, of course, played Egon in the Ghostbuster franchise. And, you know, he said, like, if he, not only was he missed because of the person, but he, he, he missed him because... You know, Harold had such a, such huge input in how Ghostbusters played out and the storylines and kind of, you know, the, the, the look and feel. So he was a presence that was hugely missed. And another presence that's missed, unfortunately, is still 
Rick Moranis. Rick Moranis is still confirmed to not be in the movie. So, you know, Rick Moranis, if you followed his career and you understand him, you know, he's been out of Hollywood for a very, very long time. Uh, once very prominent in the 80s and 90s in a lot of movies. Um, you know, he decided to take a step back because of an illness that his wife suffered from. Um, and then he thought that Hollywood was no longer important for him and he really wanted to focus on his family and really, um, you know, be with them and spend more time with them. And it led to this huge, huge disappearance from him um, in Hollywood for a very long time. So unfortunately, it doesn't look like he will be back in the new Ghostbusters. You never know. Bill might be playing coy. We don't know. Um, Bill has been known to do that before. Um, but you can see Rick Moranis uh, talking about Disney Plus before. He actually did show up in an interview in their Disney Plus's new show called Prop Culture. Prop Culture is this new series that they're doing that kind of um, dives into the props and um, sets of a lot of the Disney movies. Um, each episode is dedicated to a different movie franchise or series. Um, and one of them they have is dedicated to the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids uh, franchise. And they did score a live interview with Rick Moranis. So um, I haven't seen it yet, but I saw like little clips of it. So it is interesting to kind of see him back on TV. And um, since he is kind of selective on what he does, he did confirm or it was confirmed earlier on that he did agree to kind of show up in the new sequel of Honey, I Shrunk the Kids that is supposed to be um, starring Josh Gad to play Rick Moranis' older like son all grown up in the future. So if that's true, then we could see him back on the big screen or small screen, depending on how things uh, pan out uh, with this pandemic um, in the future. So definitely some things uh, interesting to, to look out for there. Um, moving on um now i kind of just like want to talk about as it's friday and even though you're probably more than likely already home you're excited for the weekend because you're gonna be home um you know i always like i i feel like i i want to be i don't know if they had this where you guys were but in new york uh at growing up they always i always listen to morning radio um and afternoon radio and we have this uh, radio station called Z100. Z100 is your local kind of generic uh, pop, uh, top 40, uh, all the mainstream music hit station, right? And every morning back in the 80s and, and 90s, they had the morning zoo crew. And in the afternoons, they always had the happy-go-lucky, quirky DJ. Um, and they always had a special Friday thing where, you know, they celebrated Friday and they always had this big to do, you know, live from on top of the Empire State Building. It's Kid Kelly or something like that. Uh, Z100. And then he had his five o'clock Friday countdown, you know, where, you know, big whistle blows and everyone's ready and geared up. It's Friday. And, you know, kind of like uh, Fred Flintstone in, in the opening of the Flintstones where he's like, yeah, and he's like jumping out the window, sliding off a dinosaur tail, um, celebrating that he's out of work and gearing up for the weekend. Uh, I kind of miss that, you know, I don't know, given that I do this show uh, on Fridays uh, at 12 p.m. Maybe I can do something like that in the future to kind of like pep in the mood, uh, especially if I see that, you know, more and more people are actually in physical offices. Uh, who knows? Um, but I, I, I always think about that and, you know, kind of remember those moments. But um, as you're trying to figure out what to do for um, the weekend and what to watch is, um, you know, I kind of like to put together some things that I found interesting that maybe you will, that you want to maybe check out this weekend. Uh, before I move on from that, I did forget one other piece of news that I also found interesting from this past week is that DC Swamp Thing, uh, if you recall, um, Swamp Thing was something that aired on, um, I believe it was the DC Universe app if I'm not mistaken, but it was canceled, I believe, after only three episodes, three or four episodes, but it got a lot of huge praises and acclaim. Uh, it looks like 
season one of the series is actually being picked up by the CW this fall. Um, I'm sure it's to add to their arsenal of all the live action DC TV programming that they have, you know, whether it's um, Batwoman, The Flash, I believe Arrow already ended, Legends of Tomorrow, all that stuff like that. So it'll be interesting to see like how that kind of plays out since it's coming back um, and, you know, where are they going to pick it up? from is it going to still be gritty it, it was supposed to be more like a horror driven uh type of uh series and that's one of the things that kind of got its acclaim so we'll see we'll see how that goes but moving on to what to watch this weekend so if you're familiar with Bo Jo Hong's Snowpiercer, the movie that came out several years ago starring Chris Evans, um, it was kind of like a cult hit. Um, it was something that I found just on Netflix randomly and I watched and I thought it was very well done. Um, akin to like the raid, it takes place on this train um, trying to get from one place to another and all the mishaps and happenings on this train. Um, so you get to see kind of the progression of this man's journey through this train. Um, and the way the train was kind of se segregated was that you know, certain class of people were only allowed to be on certain cars and the higher class was way ahead in the front of the train. And it was basically a man's journey from the back to the front. Um, but apparently, you know, they've been working on a live action TV show uh, based off of this for some time now. And we finally get to see how it's going to play out this Sunday on TNT. Uh, Snowpiercer is debuting this Sunday on TNT. Um, if you're not familiar with who's on the show, they actually got some pretty um, recognizable names here. They have Jennifer Connelly and David Diggs, um, who are two of the main cast members there. So I think this is something that'll be interesting to see how they're gonna put it together and how it's gonna play out. Um, I'll have a link of the article that explains more about the series and its long production and how the delay of getting it onto the small screen has taken it to where we are now. So I hopefully will get to check it out this weekend. If not, I will definitely catch it on uh, a replay. Um, so, you know, and if you have been a fan of The Last Dance, the last two episodes are it will be airing this Sunday. Um, I've been enjoying this series. Um, after these last two episodes air, I'll uh, probably put together a separate video to discuss my thoughts about the whole series um, and how it recapped that infamous last season of Michael Jordan's Bulls run. Um, so, like I said, so far it's been huge, highly entertaining uh, and definitely worth watching. Um, so last two episodes air this Sunday. Um, something to remember and keep in mind. Uh, when it comes to movies, um, just one second here. Um, you know, normally uh, during this time, uh, if things, you know, we're normal, back to normal, sort of speak, kind of like, uh, you know, people are going to the movies and enjoying, you know, as you know, every Friday was new movie release day. And uh, me being a huge fan of movies, I was always looking forward to this day. Um, you know, something I envisioned myself covering in these shows was that I was going to discuss what's new in the theater and what's worth checking out and all that. But there is no theater. There's nothing to go out and check out. Um, so what I did is that uh, just for shits and giggles, so to speak, is that I went backwards in time and I kind of went back to around this time last year to kind of remind myself as to what came out in theaters around this time last year. So you know, something to remember, uh, the Pokemon movie, um, Detective Pikachu, uh, came out uh, May 10th of last year. Um, you know, it kind of domestically grossed around $144 million. Um, and it was it is considered to be one of the more successful video game adaptations out there. Um, I did watch it with a friend of mine in the theater. Um, I liked the first half of the movie and then I got lost during the second half of the movie and I think one of the reasons why is that I have not been a Pokemon player or following Pokemon for a very long time since it first came out here in the States um, 
And, uh, you know, I feel like if you are a fan of Pokemon, if you're a fan of the series, if you hold the characters very close to your heart and you love them, then this was a movie for you. This was the movie that you've been waiting for. Um, and I, from what I hear or what I heard from a lot of my friends um, who are huge Pokemon fans and who've watched the movie, they loved it. They thought it was a great movie. So, um, And as you could see, it was pretty successful in the box office. So um, definitely, definitely um, add that to the, the very small list of highly ac uh, acceptable video game adaptation movies. Uh, of course, number one for me will always be the original Mortal Kombat. Um, but also around this time last year, um, on May 17th, you had John Wick Chapter 3 came out, uh, Parabellum. Um, another great addition to that franchise, a surprising franchise. Um, and as something that Paul and I spoke about last week, um, they did... Uh, a free live stream of the first John Wick movie that you could watch from home. Um, they also just released a John Wick Hex, uh, which is a playable game on PlayStation uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, so, you know, we know that they're working on a Chapter 4. Uh, we also heard rumblings of them working on a spin off TV series um, called The Continental, uh, based around the, the infamous hotel. So the John Wick uh, franchise is, you know, alive and kicking and very strong. Um, so it, it was nice to kind of remember that last year around this time, that's when we had Chapter 3 come out. And it looks like domestically it, it kind of grossed around $171 million. Um, and A Dog's Journey, uh, another dog movie that was pretty much uh, created to make you cry during the whole time. Um, but since uh, there's no cinema releases, um, basically, I'd like to review or I, I've been reviewing kind of things that you could watch at home. Um, but I have I do want to mention that there has been one legitimate release um, this week, and it's Scoob. Scoob! That's my poor impersonation of Shaggy. But Scoob, uh, a movie that was an uh, animated movie um, developed by Warner Brothers, um, being released on video on demand uh, only. Uh, they have no plans right now of releasing this in theaters. Uh, obviously, no surprise there because of the current situation. Um, it's funny. That's why when you look at the, the movie poster here, it says in theaters, only in theaters, May 15th. Um, I feel like I should edit that to say only on VOD as of May 15th. Um, but um, from what I've seen, the story kind of follows the first ever meeting of Shaggy and Scoob um, and then their progression into, um, you know, the the group of uh mystery solving kids um they come across the blue falcon um and then they have to help him with this uh, mission or um, kind of solve this crime that's going on right now it looks like a, a a cute little fun movie to catch with the kids um if you have been a fan of scooby-doo um or you love scooby-doo um from the initial reviews that i've read you might want to be a little careful with this one um it seems like the common uh, sentiment about this movie is that they're pushing too much to the current generation. And there's a lot of references in there that kind of uh, uh, cater more towards the current young generation, where, for example, the Blue Falcon has seemed to be dabbing in his entrance. Um, I think uh, one of the characters mentioned social injustice or whatever the case is um you know the reference of millennials is brought up so i would be very careful about that it might kind of steer you away from enjoying the movie um but uh again it's it's something new to watch and it's uh, a legitimate um you know studio release and if you want a quick recap of the synopsis here is scooby and the gang face their most challenging mystery ever a plot to unleash the ghost dog cerebus upon the world as they race to stop this dog apocalypse the gang discovers that scooby has an epic destiny 
greater than anyone imagined. Um, the voice talent is actually very, very uh, interesting and exciting here. Well, you have Will Forte, uh, who's voicing uh, Shaggy. Um, you have Mark Wahlberg, who is the voice talent behind the Blue Falcon. Uh, Jason Isaacs is in here, who plays the villain Dick Dastardly. Um, and then you have Gina Rodriguez, Zac Efron, Amanda Seyfried, uh, and Ken Jeong. Oh, and Tracy Morgan is in here as, oh, I'm not going to um, expose who they're voicing. That might be a bit of a spoiler alert there. But uh, if you're interested, by all means, definitely do check out the movie. Um, it, it might be interesting for you to watch. Now, let's say you don't want to plop down 20 bucks for a new video in the man movie. I understand, you know, it's a hard time right now. Um, a lot of you may be furloughed or out of work, uh, like myself. So what can you watch for free? So the last couple of weeks, I've been kind of reviewing some free B movies. And I call them freebies like letter B because they are a downgrade from your normal A movie. Um, and these are the types of movies that you tend to find for free on YouTube, um, of course, with ads. Uh, so keep it keep in mind that you will have to endure some ads while you watch these movies. But I kind of I handpicked uh, five movies that you can catch for free on YouTube right now or this weekend if you ever so inclined. And the first one is a classic, and that's Bloodsport. It is the classic Jean-Claude 1998 movie that kind of brought him into prominence. And if you've never seen this movie, this was a big hit with a lot of action fans uh, back in the day. Um, and uh, the synopsis for Bloodsport is that Jean-Claude Van Damme makes his starring debut in the aptly titled Bloodsport, an American soldier at large in Hong Kong. Van Damme becomes involved in the Kumite, uh, or Kumitai, uh, a highly illegal kickboxing competition. Whoever su survives the bout will be crowned Kumitai champion of the world, a title that has plenty of challengers with homicide in their hearts. The finale offers a duel to the death between Van Damme and reigniting Kumitai king Bolo Young. Uh, Apparently, the script is based on real-life exploits of a martial arts champ, Frank Ducks, who also serves as the film's fight coordinator. Um, so yeah, so again, this is a all-time action movie classic. It's what brought Jean-Claude Van Damme's name into the populace and into everyone's homes, um, and what led to a sprawling career since then of action movie goodness crazy feats and him always doing those crazy splits on tabletops or floors uh, in the future. So I definitely recommend catching that if you want to relive the classic or if you've never seen it or if you're with someone who's never seen it, might be something worth bringing up. Moving on to something more family friendly, Ribbit. Ribbit is a 2014 animated movie here. Uh, Ribbit is a frog with an identity crisis. Oh, no. Uh, you don't want that with a frog. Uh, he hates hopping. He hates water. And pretty much hates anything a normal frog likes to do. Together with his best friend, a flying squirrel, he embarks on a journey in search of his rightful place in this world. Uh, and it stars the voice talents of Sean Astin of the Lord of the Rings uh, trilogy uh, and Goonies. And don't forget Goonies, and uh, the lovable and never forgettable Tim Curry, uh, rest in peace. Uh, sounds like a, a fun movie for you and the kids to enjoy, or for you just to play in the background while the kids watch, and you can do something else. So, uh, moving on to another family-friendly movie is Freedom Force, out of this world adventure. This looks like uh, one of those uh, Incredibles slash Big Hero 6 ripoffs here. Um, but the synopsis reads as follows. There is a plot underway to change the course of history. Four kids are chosen to be the Freedom Force, a gang of unlikely heroes who travel through time to change the outcome of sacred stories. The great adventure takes them to the deepest jungles, outer space, and underwater cities. But things go horribly wrong 
when a mad scientist tries to stop them. The kids have to battle cannibals, runaway hot air balloons, and a giant octopus before they can complete their quest and save the world from complete chaos. Uh, it does star the voice talents of Sarah Michelle Gellar and Christopher Lloyd. So you got some big talents behind this movie. Um, don't know if it's any good, but it, again, if you are inclined, by all means, check it out. And as I say every week, if you do check out one of these movies, do let me know how they are. I would love to hear your thoughts and if it's something that I should probably check out for myself. So uh, moving on to the next tile, we have... And this is one I just saw and I just had to include it because it made me laugh just by the title alone. Saving Private Perez. Uh, and if you are thinking what I'm thinking, this is one of those homages to the great Spielberg movie, Saving Private Ryan, but with a him Hispanic flavor to it. So this was a movie that came out in 2013 and synopsis is as such. Mexico's most notorious gangster, Julian Perez, answers to no one except his mother. So when mom needs to see her youngest son, who's fighting in Iraq, Julian and his band of bad guys embark on mission to bring him home. Um, I think this is one of those classic movies that is meant for a bad movie night uh, or a movie when uh, all of you who are present and watching are drinking your faces off. Um, I used to do this thing with my friends called Bad Movie Night where, you know, we would pick a horrible movie, you know, drink and just make fun of the entire movie as we watch it. Uh, this definitely sounds like something that would be added to that rotation if we were still doing that. And it might be added in a future, uh, you know, I implementation. So... Saving Private Perez, definitely do not miss out on that one. Um, and lastly, I did want to include something that is worth watching, um, something that may be interesting to a lot of you, and that is the documentary Sound City. So this documentary was actually directed by David Grohl. David Grohl is the drummer of Foo Fighters and also the drummer of Nirvana. Um, he has a huge love of the music industry, but most importantly, the record industry and this is kind of like goes uh into his uh deep um investigation and telling of the industry as a whole um so basically the synopsis reads as such deep in the san fernando valley behind the train tracks and amidst dilapidated warehouses was rock and roll's best kept secret sound city America's greatest unsung recording studio housed a lot of legendary one-of-a-kind recording consoles and became the birthplace to the seminal albums that defined the 20th century of music. Um, Fleetwood Mac, Neil Young, Rick Springfield, Tom Petty, Nirvana, amongst many others, all put magic to tape within these walls. It was rock and roll hollowed. It was rock and roll's hollowed ground. Um, so they rolled. Uh, like I said, directs this and it features interviews and performances by iconic musicians who kind of made their careers out of recording from this studio. Um, so, you know, I've seen a lot of clips from this documentary. I've never watched it from beginning to end. Um, so I'm actually kind of happy to see it's actually available for me to watch. Um, from those that I know who've watched it said it is fascinating, um, especially if you are into music and into the recording of music and how musicians get together and put together their albums. It's definitely worth a watch. And uh, I'm definitely going to be uh, hopefully checking this out this weekend. If not, it's just good to know and nice to know that it is available out there. So I wanted to make sure that I left you guys on a good note um, and a good uh, recommendation uh, for something that you can check out whenever you have the time. Um, but like all of us, we have the time almost every weekend nowadays uh, since there's not much to do. But with that being said, that's the hour and that's the show. So thanks, guys, for watching. Uh, again, I always appreciate you guys checking the show out, whether live or in the replay. Uh, again, Mondays at 8 p.m., uh, Fridays at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I talk about all stuff that is pop culture, gaming, movies, TV, 
Japanese pop culture, whatever it, whatever it is that I find interesting in the news, I bring it to you guys. So、uh, keep a lookout、uh, on the YouTube channel. I will be hopefully debuting some new videos there in the upcoming days.、Um, other than that, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays are my Twitch streaming days.、Um, today, I'm going back to playing some Final Fantasy VII Remake. So if you have the time and you're around, come by and chat while I continue that storyline. So, that being said, please stay cool, stay classy, stay safe,、uh, be kind to one another, wash your hands, wear a mask, just be careful out there, guys. I want to be able to see that you guys come back next week all fine and healthy.、Um, but stay healthy and be good and enjoy your weekends. Alright, guys? Until next time. Peace.